Disclaimer, I am not a dietitian, a pediatrician, a scientist, nor am I a statistician. However, this study is really, really simple, and I think pretty much anyone can read through it and understand it and even notice the limitations pretty easily. So I am going to give my two cents on it, mostly by relying on and just kind of parroting information from experts in uh, nutrition and pediatrics. I am a vegan and so is my child, so this kind of stuff, you know, information that may show possible adverse effects of avoiding non-vegan foods like milk, yeah, that's obviously something I'm pretty concerned about. Hey guys, so a study recently came out called Association Between Non-Cow Milk Beverage Consumption and Childhood Height. So researchers essentially wanted to see if non-cow's milk had an effect on height relative to cow's milk. So they analyzed data from a study of over 5,000 Canadian children between the age of two and six. Specifically, they looked at the parents of these kids at their answers to these two questions. How many cups of non-cow milk does your child have in a typical day? And how many cups of cow milk does your child have in a typical day? You may have noticed that non-cow's milk includes goat milk. And I kind of find that funny considering the sorry vegans uh, headlines that I've seen. I haven't seen any sorry goat milk drinkers. Goat, goat, there's no real word for that. I haven't seen any sorry goat milk drinker headlines. Anyway, back to the study. No surprise that the vast majority of the kids drank cow milk on a daily basis. 643 kids drank non-cow milk and only 246 drank only non-cow milk. So what they ended up finding was a connection between higher non-cow milk consumption and lower height. For each daily cup of non-cow's milk they drank, children were 0.4 centimeters shorter than average for their age. For each daily cup of cow's milk they drank, children were 0.2 centimeters taller than average. The height difference for a three-year-old who drank three cups of non-cow's milk compared to three cups of cow's milk per day was 1.5 centimeters. This may sound really, really tiny, but for a kid, for a three-year-old, it's not. This means drinking three cups of non-cow's milk per day might move a child to the 15th from the 50th percentile for height and vice versa compared with other children their age. So what is going on here? And should vegans and apparently goat milk drinkers, <laughs> should we be worried? Possibly. Study limitations. As vegan dietitian Jenny Messina notes, this is a cross-sectional study, and generally those are pretty weak forms of evidence. More importantly, and as you've probably already noticed, the study did not differentiate between milks, between soy milk, between rice milk, between goat's milk, because it couldn't. Again, the only information they had was how much, roughly how much, the children were consuming of cow's milk or of other milk, right? And this was provided by their parents via survey, which is a problem in and of itself since surveys are prone to things like just simple misremembering. Based on this information, there was just no way for them to know what cow's milk, what non-cow's milks were being consumed. For all we know, it could have all been goat's milk. This is actually really, really important because all plant milks are not the same. Beverages vary in nutritional content, and we could not evaluate which non-cow milk beverages most influence the observed relation. For example, soy and goat milk beverages tend to have higher protein content than almond or rice milk beverages. We also don't know what else was being consumed. You know, we don't know what the rest of their diets looked like. Maybe overall, the kids who were consuming non-cow's milk were just getting less nutrients overall, less protein, less fat than the kids who were consuming cow's milk. Interestingly, these two studies found that children who didn't consume cow's milk didn't get enough of certain nutrients like protein, fat, calcium, and overall calories. Protein, fat, and IGF-1. The researchers note three possible reasons why this positive correlation between cow's milk and height has been shown over and over and over again. Protein, fat, and IGF-1. Protein is obviously very, very important for growth and development, and when compared to most non-dairy milks, most plant milks, cow's milk does have more protein, a lot more protein. One cup of 2% cow's milk contains about eight grams of protein, whereas one cup of commercially available almond milk, rice milk, cashew milk, and coconut milk contain one 
one, less than one, and zero grams of protein. Soy milk is the exception with about eight grams, between seven and eight grams per cup, so roughly the same as cow's milk. Silk's protein nut milk blends, I think it's a blend of almond and cashew and, and pea protein. Um, this also contains lots of protein at 10 grams per cup, so actually more than cow's milk. And yeah, they're also super delicious. You can check out my review right here. But perusing the non-dairy section of my grocery store shows that most of the readily available non-dairy milks fall far short on protein. As you can see here, it's overwhelmingly just almond milk, which is very, very low in protein. There's no question that parents should not be giving their kids these milks as a replacement for cow's milk. The AAP and other organizations are very clear on this point. So number two is fat. This is another possible concern. If you are comparing plant milks to whole milks, there's a very large difference. Whole milk contains about double the fat as even full fat soy milk. If you are comparing them to 2% milk, which apparently is fine for kids, then the difference is not as large for some milks. Soy and coconut have roughly the same amount of fat per cup, while almond and rice have about half of that. The only one I could find that actually competes with whole milk when it comes to fat is Silk's protein nut milk, which has the same amount of fat per cup, eight grams. So finally, IGF-1, or insulin-like growth factor one. And this is something, it's a hormone that our bodies produce, and it absolutely plays a pivotal role in growth and development for children but is getting more of it necessarily a good thing? First, soy protein does actually increase IGF-1 levels when we consume it, but not by as much as dairy. Second, studies have found a positive correlation between IGF-1 levels and certain cancers like prostate cancer, although this certainly doesn't mean that IGF-1 causes cancer, as some vegans claim. Also, these studies are on adults, not children. Growth and development is obviously really important for children, not so much for adults. Although Connie Weaver, professor of nutrition science at Purdue, she did have this to say regarding the study results and IGF-1, basically that there are trade-offs. You know, you may be taller, but you may also be at greater risk for fractures and cancer. In fact, being taller has been linked to higher risk for several different cancers although it's also been associated with lower risk for diabetes, heart attack, and stroke. As per usual, more research is needed. Finally, and probably most importantly, if IGF-1 is so important for children, for growth, then why are dietetic organizations and pediatric organizations like the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics and the American Academy of Pediatrics why aren't they concerned about it? Why instead do they support an appropriately planned vegan diet for all life stages, including infancy? It's not like this is the first study to link cow's milk to stature, and yet the experts aren't concerned. The only real concern that they seem to have is with uh, nutrients like protein and fat and calcium and vitamin D and other nutrients that you would get in large amounts from cow's milk. Cow's milk is deemed unnecessary as long as kids are getting enough protein and fat and other nutrients from either full fat fortified soy milk or other plant foods that they're consuming. Even this pro-dairy site only mentions calories, protein, fat, and other nutrients when talking about the benefits of milk for kids. They don't make any mention of IGF-1. And the press release, the actual press release for this study, again, no mention of IGF-1, only protein and fat. So those are the three potential benefits of cow's milk that the authors mention. And again, the only ones that dietitians and pediatricians are really interested in are protein and fat. And this is really good news, considering that it's definitely possible to get enough of these nutrients on a vegan diet even for children. Outside of this study, I have also seen mention of calories as a possible concern, which also makes sense. One cup of whole milk is about 150 calories and one cup of 2% is about 120 calories. On the other hand, one cup of original almond breeze is only 60 calories, a large percentage of which just comes from added sugar. Even unsweetened full fat fortified soy milk is only 80 calories. The only fortified plant milks I could find that actually compete are, again, Silk's protein nut milk at 130 calories per cup and also Pacific's ultra soy at 100 
140 calories per cup, although this one does contain a lot more added sugar than silks. So to wrap this section of the video up, it is impossible to say from this study what factor or factors are at play here. But what we can say for sure is that one, Protein is important for child growth and development, and many plant milks are not a good source of protein. Two, fat is important for child growth and development, and many plant milks are not a good source of fat. And three, calories are important for child growth and development, and many plant milks are not a good source of calories. Almond breeze, as delicious as it is, is little more than fortified sugar water. Of course, that's not to say cow's milk has no flaws cow's milk and iron deficiency in children. Excessive cow's milk consumption definitely does present a serious problem for children. Iron deficiency anemia, because number one, milk is low in iron, number two, milk inhibits iron, and number three, it actually causes blood loss by damaging the lining of the intestines. This is why children are not supposed to be given any cow's milk before the age of one, and even after that, the amount should be limited. In the second year of life, cow's milk Milk continues to cause problems in maintaining iron stores, and its consumption should be limited to less than 24 ounces per day, with some clinicians calling for a stricter limit to 16 ounces per day. Pediatrician Dr. Dan Flanders recommends only one to two cups of milk per day for children, and Harvard School of Public Health recommends the same, no more than two cups per day. Is taller better? To a point, yeah. I mean, not meeting your genetic potential for height because of malnutrition during childhood is obviously a bad thing. And again, being taller has been linked to a lower risk for diabetes, heart attack, stroke, but again, it's also been linked to a higher risk for various cancers. And of course, the non-cow's milk drinking kids in the study, they weren't just shorter than the cow's milk drinking kids, they were shorter than average by about 0.4 centimeters per daily cup of non-cow's milk. And this was after adjusting for maternal height. Unfortunately, they only had limited data for paternal height. Even still, this does not mean that the kids will necessarily be shorter by the time they reach adulthood, as the study's lead author and pediatrician Jonathan McGuire told CNN, although he also notes that people tend to stay on the same trajectory from childhood to adulthood. Should plant milks even be called milk? There has been an ongoing debate about whether or not plant milk companies should be allowed to market their plant milks as milk. Of course, companies like Turner and Horizon, of course they say no, um, but I have to admit, I partially agree with them, not because I care about Turner or Horizon's bottom line, but because I care and worry about children and malnutrition. There is an expectation that people have when they go shopping, when they shop for certain foods. And when it comes to milk, there is an expectation that that milk will be high in things like protein and calcium. It's reasonable to expect that some people are going to assume that these milks are similar when they see these non-dairy milks stored, you know, shelved right next to regular cow's milk. That's the way I've seen it. It's usually stored right next to the organic cow's milk. It's reasonable to assume that they are going to think that they are roughly the same, nutritionally speaking. As the authors note, many non-cow milk beverages are marketed and sold as milk products for children. Although the nutritional content of cow milk is standardized by the FDA and the Food and Drug Regulations of Canada, non-cow milk is not subject to the same standards. Standards. The USDA MyPlate and Canadian Food Guide have acknowledged that unfortified milk alternatives do not provide the same energy, protein, or vitamins and minerals found in cow milk. Standardization of the nutritional content of non-cow milk may assist parents in choosing between milk beverages of equal nutritional content. So I think there is a solid argument to be made for standardizing plant milks, for standardizing non-dairy milks, particularly if they can legally be called almond milk, soy milk, whatever. There is a level of expectation that consumers have when purchasing milk. And as vegans, we should not just assume that all plant beverages are worthy of the title milk just because they're vegan. By doing so, we may inadvertently be creating more sick, malnourished vegan kids. So in conclusion, I don't think this study deserves the sorry vegans headlines that it's received, but I don't think that we can just dismiss the study as dairy propaganda either. So if you have seen Mike the Vegan's video on this, on this study, you know what I'm talking about. He talks a lot about the possible dairy industry ties and the IGF-1 cancer ties, 
while making no mention of protein, no mention of fat, or the inadequacies of many plant milks. So we have two possible scenarios. Either the findings are completely bunk or they are accurate and due to the exogenous mammalian hormones exerting growth pressures and increasing cancer risk. That's just flat out wrong. It's not an either or between either the study is bullshit or it's IGF-1. The study could still not be bullshit and it could be due to, again, protein, fat, overall calories, which makes total sense and it's something that the authors know again because there is such variation in nutrition between among different plant milks you know 16 grams of protein per two cups of cow's milk versus two grams of protein per two cups of almond milk that is nothing to sneeze at not only does this come across as yet another vegan who doesn't want to admit any potential problems with vegan diets but it also presents only part of the story to vegans. For someone who has obviously positioned himself as an accurate and reliable source on vegan nutrition, it is really alarming that Mike doesn't seem concerned with the possibility of vegan parents feeding their children inadequate diets, especially given the number of cases of malnourished vegan kids that have gained media attention in just the last year alone. By no means am I anti-vegan for kids. Again, my little kid is vegan. I'm absolutely pro-vegan for kids. I just think that in order to really help people, to help people go and stay vegan, including children, we have to be honest and accurate in our reporting. Even if that means admitting that cow's milk has many nutritional advantages for children that many, most of the plant milks just lack. And ultimately, this is a good thing. It's something that can help us do better. It can give us a chance to point out these problems and ultimately, again, to help people by recommending the better plant milks, the full fat fortified soy milks, and apparently the silk protein nut milk, which is just, I guess, the best plant milk ever. So go buy it. I'm not being paid by silk, I promise I'm not. But silk, if you want to pay me money, I will totally accept it. <laughs> I mean, I'll have to tell everyone that you're that you're giving me money, obviously, but uh, I will totally take your money. That's the thing. You don't even have to pay me money. You can just pay me in soy milk. I will be perfectly happy and I will show for you in like every video. Okay, maybe not every video, but in a lot of videos. Okay, maybe this is a bad idea. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. Of course, if you have any comments or questions, you can leave those down below. If you want to subscribe, you can subscribe. If you want to support the channel on Patreon, you can support the channel on Patreon, patreon.com slash unnaturalvegan. Uh, thanks again. I will have a new video very soon.